Hi, and welcome to my channel. And welcome to part four of my short series where I get my 60 pound eBay find, my 13 by 18, or five by seven tailboard travel camera up together and ready to shoot photographs again. In parts one, two, and three, I built a spring back to go where the glass plate holder would normally be and allow the camera to take modern double dark slides. You can see one in the image there. That was very successful and uh, I put a new uh, plastic screen in case I do ever want to use uh, old fashioned plate holders with the camera. And this time, we're going to be building an adapter so that the travel camera can take the lens boards and of course the lenses that were intended for my 5x4 MPP. Now some of those will have enough coverage for 5.7 so um, I'm going to be experimenting and seeing what works and taking it from there. As you can see the MPP lens boards is the back view of one, are of a step design. So it wasn't actually that difficult to build a small box, admittedly here with slightly um, schoolboy tenon joints, um, to go round it fairly tightly. Um, I secured those with elastic bands and glued them in place um, and left them 24 hours to dry. Both my MPP and the original travel camera, uh, front lens standard, use a sliding latch arrangement to hold lens boards in place, or certainly would have done on the uh, tailboard camera, except the lens board part is missing. I decided to use a similar system, traced the latches out uh, using a CAD program on the computer printed them onto ordinary paper and then stuck them to some brass sheet and then cut them out old style with files. In the first episode, I showed a picture of the wood that I'd chosen for the front sliding uh, panel or lens, not really a lens panel, it's a sl cross slide panel. Um, that wood was advertised on eBay as African teak. Well, I'm not quite sure what African teak is um, in their definition. Uh, it looked a lot like something I've used before called Aformosa, but um, it wasn't quite as yellow. Uh, it was certainly absolutely iron hard um, and gave me quite a bit of uh, difficulty in sawing it. Saw it I did, however. I clamped uh, a length of two by one timber to it to act as a guide uh, and then used a uh, brass back gent saw. It was a bit laborious, but um, eventually I got through it. I cut two pieces, one slightly wider than the other one to produce the lip that would allow the whole piece to slide into the front of the camera. Um, the wood was actually three millimeters thick per layer and the lip needed to be 2.5 but I, I used a scraper to get that down to thickness which you'll see more easily in the next set of pictures. The hole in the panel was cut with a um, coping saw. Some people would call it a fret saw. Um, there's my big padded clamp in the uh, top of the screen there. You can see the lip at the edge of the sliding panel um, that keys into the front standard of the uh, camera. A little bit more clearly in this picture. Uh, what I'm doing here is gluing on uh, cross grain end bits that uh, complete the full width of the board. Look quite a nice decorative touch and allowed me to get enough wood out of a, a fairly small piece of teak to start with. The lens board frame was glued and screwed for security to the teak uh, slider panel 
um, and then I took everything home and trial fitted it on the old camera and it fitted pretty well needed just a little bit of uh, sanding and adjusting my apologies for skating over the gluing and screwing together bit um, I had my hands full a bit at that time here you can see that uh, the whole panel takes my very large 250 millimeter soft focus lens um, as well so that's quite a cool bonus and so back to the workshop to apply uh, a wipe of Birchwood and Case's True Oil, which is actually designed for putting a finish on gun stocks, but actually works on all kinds of woodwork very, very well and it's very easy to apply. I refitted the brass sliders, making a note to get some small brass washers uh, to make them slide a little bit easier, which is a modification I've done now. Um, and aside from staining inside black and staining the back black that's actually the whole thing done so there we have the camera with a lens adapter and back and all in condition to go and take photographs as soon as i get some film and as soon as i work out some method of developing 7x5. I haven't quite worked that one out yet. I may buy a spiral, I may build something myself. That I shall have to see. But essentially, it's all ready to go. A big bonus is that I found my 150mm Fujinon lens uh, covers 5x7 beautifully. So that I can use as my go-to wide-angle lens. I'm a huge fan of wide-angle lenses. Uh, probably my favourite lens on 5.4 is my 90mm Angulon, even though it is only 6.8. I've ended up with a few bits and pieces over from this project. Um, I bought an old Agfa ReproMaster process lens on eBay with a view to fitting it as a 150mm wide angle, um, which I was going to use the front lens shutter that I picked up for very little money. But I really have no need to uh, with the Fuji lens, so um, I may sell them to partly finance the project. I'll see. It's been massive fun producing this short series. And if anyone's got any questions at all on it, please put them in the comments and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. I can't wait to take photographs with a camera that probably hasn't been used for the best part of a hundred years and uh, I'll take you on that journey as well when it happens. Hope you've enjoyed this break from my usual format of videos and if you've liked it well I'm sure I can come up with some more technical videos and make it videos for you. I'm usually mucking about with something in the workshop. So if you've enjoyed my content hit the like and ring that bell and if you want to see some more of my general insanity then perhaps think about subscribing anyway you take care of yourselves till the next time bye